Oh, good. I mean, the guys are looking forward to their summer, I'm sure, and uh, it went well. No, we haven't. No. I mean, we haven't had meetings yet. So we just did the uh, exit meetings for the last two days, and uh, we're all for Easter vacation, and then uh, we'll probably get back together sometime. Coach, now that you, this season is all over, you've got a little time to reflect. What are your thoughts about this turbulent up and down usually riddle season that you've just gone through? It's something that you've never gone through before, right? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we've talked about it almost every day for the last couple of months. It's odd. Uh, a lot of the injuries were very odd injuries that uh, don't usually occur in a, on a basketball team, but uh, they are. It happened. You, we dealt with them as best we could. Uh, no one's happy about the season um, the way it went, but uh, you know, it's time to step away from it a little bit, reflect, get back together, figure out the direction, and then uh, do it. No, I think every NBA coach, especially come off a, a year that no one's happy and uh, that goes sideways, I think every coach should be under scrutiny and they're under it even if it goes well. I mean, you know, con considering last year that some of the coaches that got fired, uh, some of the best years they've ever had. So that's part of the job. And, uh, and, you know, I think as coaches, we hold ourselves under scrutiny. We see what we could have done better and should have done this, should have done that. And uh, uh, you do reflect on it and you try to do a better job. Um, It'll come a day where sit down with management, see where they want to go, and try to get on the same page, whatever the page that is. Uh, that hasn't been decided today, and uh, and then you go with it, and that's just part of the job. What do you think you could have criticized? I'm sorry, huh? Was it fair for people to criticize despite all the injuries? I think so. I, I, there's you know there's always things we could have done better. Uh, I think that's normal. Um, uh, you know, it's our our job is just to. You know what could we have done better? What you know what path would have been easier? And it's easier with you know hindsight uh, to say, well, we should have done this to that. I don't want to get into what that would be, but uh, uh, things don't always go smoothly. I thought that um, for the most part, our guys are very competitive. We developed some guys, so there are some uh, silver linings in there. But uh, as a whole, the season was very disappointing for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think any time the Lakers call, anyone would take this job. So, yeah, I think that's how it is. Now, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you don't know me real well. There's a lot of times I have those moments. But, um, um, you know, it was tough from the very beginning, and it was uh, some things had to break right, and they never did break right. And it started with uh, Steve Nash and Steve Blake being out. You know, your point guards being out, and that's, you know, the league now is dominated by point guard play and three point shots and smart players, and and uh, we just never could get that full array of people together at the same time. Happens, and uh, we try to do the best we could. Everybody's disappointed with the way it went, and uh, again. You know, it's time to flip the pages, go on. Let's, uh, uh, you know, in a few weeks, we'll all get on the same page, wherever that page is, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, it's ludicrous. Uh, to me, the pace of play and the way you spread the floor it leads to less injuries. Uh, you know, I've never encountered this a whole lot. Uh, just because you don't pound and hit, and, and uh, to me it leads less. Now, whether that's the case or not, I don't know. If I see scientific data that shows that's not right, then obviously you want to tweak something, but uh, I, I don't believe in that. How would you describe your relationship with Kobe right now? Um, professional. You know, that he's a very competitor, big time competitor, and uh, he's going to do everything to win. I think I'm competitive and I'll do everything to win. Sometimes it does butt heads a little bit, but uh, um, nothing out of the ordinary. Are you guys on the same page by how, by the direction the team going forward? Well, yeah, the, that direction be winning. So yeah, you're on the same page. Now, you might have a little tweaks and, you know, and I think every coach has to tweak stuff. You know, I, ideally I have something, ideally he has something, it might not be the same. Uh, you try to find a, a middle road. And uh, you get only got to be careful not to dilute it so much that that uh, 
you don't get the best of anything. And so that's the tricky part. But uh, uh, one thing that I know is that he will do everything to win. And as a coach, that's kind of all you can ask for. Isn't that kind of what's, what's happened here in the last couple of years where it's kind of been diluted so much that you don't get the best of everything, right? Well, a little bit. But you know what? It's been diluted because of injuries. Um, we didn't get the best of anything because Steve Nash wasn't Steve Nash uh, for reasons. And, and having Blake out at the same time. And um, when that happens and you don't get uh, attraction or you don't get the consistency in the play, then it starts to erode different things and confidences in, in different people. And uh, that, that happens. That's a byproduct of losing or struggling or trying to get over the hump. You can't quite get there for whatever reason. And, and so you, you understand it. You just try to make better choices and do better, tweak better, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, you know, I've heard that question a lot of times. I just don't understand that question. I, you know, I'm going to do the best I can do. And it's not up to me to evaluate. I don't, you know, I don't know if you know, but I don't hire and fire myself. You know, it just doesn't happen. Uh, so that's up to other people to do that. I don't sit around and, and uh, I do try to reflect and find out what I could do better. Uh, no doubt about it. But, I, you know, I don't send myself a report card. I just don't do that. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, things I can do a lot better. There's so much negativity surrounding this season. A lot of players have come to you with defense. Is there any comfort? Come with what? Come to you with defense. Uh-huh. Is there any comfort in, in knowing that? Yeah, I think that's, I think most of us are in the coaching business to have, uh, it's the relationship between players and coaches and, and trying to reach a common goal that is the bond that, that makes coaching fun. Uh, and with this group of guys that we had, especially uh, after things went sideways and, uh, and the negativity was pouring down on them and me and, and, and the team, um, that you develop a bond. And yeah, that's, it'll stick with me. And these, uh, that, that is special. And you can, if there's any underlying current, then you pull for the good stuff as the, the relationships you develop. Some of them. Oh, yeah. There was, yeah, there was some moments that, um, um, that I won't forget. And there were some positive moments, that, without a doubt. Like when you look at the rebuild that's going to happen here, that's definitely something you want to be a part of. Yeah, yeah well, you know, uh, again, you want to be part of an organization that everybody's going the same way, whether it's rebuilding, whether it's winning a championship, whatever it is, it does not matter. Uh, everybody's trying to win a championship, but. Uh, you have to take steps to get there, and that the process is what's fun. It is fun being with an organization that wants to win, doing it the right way. Uh, whether that takes uh, one step or ten steps, uh, you want to be part of that. How much of that just kind of electrifying for that is, is wanting to get a fair shot at a good season? Um, you know, I'm not going to play the card woe was me. This has been a great job. This is a great city, great fans. Uh, and you understand the, uh, the risk that you have with it. So I'm not, there's no woe with me. This is, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the next challenge, whatever that is. Uh, take some time to reflect and get your fire back up and then attack whatever, whatever the future holds. That's a good question. You know, we could be here for the next half hour and I could try to explain a lot of things. And I think that is a very important question. Um, you know, I do think that the game is changing and has changed. And it's some of the hard part of coaching is to be able to drag people over to the next side. You know, people are comfortable doing business a certain way. And when that business kind of shifts, to get people to change is not easy and uh, it, it's a process and I do think that the league is going to a, a more open style and, and a faster style and analytics you know not only are good feelings from uh, from people coaches but analytics have also proven certain things that you you know now again 
the problem comes and when they start debating this is that you get into black and whites. It's not that. There's always a gray area. You always tweak it. You always, you know, the one team's a little faster than the other. Uh, one spreads a little bit more than somebody else. You know, I hear all the time, the two-point shot is going away. Well, no, it's not going away. It's always going to be there. Now, it might go from, I'm making numbers up, but 50 times a game down to 43, and those seven times are more threes. That could happen, uh, and it will happen. It has happened. But that doesn't mean that there's no place for a post-up player. There's no place for a, a mid-range game. There is a place. It's just not what is dominant today. And it won't be. And unless the NBA changes the rules again, like the three-point line, the no hand-checking, then the basketball is going a certain way. And the problem, and I'm going to step in it right now, so be ready. The problem is most people commenting on it played a different way. And now you're shaping opinion a different way. And that's not where it's going to go. And as soon as they embrace it a little bit more, I think they're better off. But basketball's changed. And it's not the same basketball that your father played. It's just not it. And, and teams that adapt to it quicker are going to be more successful quicker. I think it's been a process and will be a process. Uh, that's probably the, the most challenging part of the job of changing opinions. And, and you can't, in, you know, you need everything to kind of go the right way. Well, it didn't. And so the opinions out there that that doesn't work, well, I'm not, I'm not convinced about that. And again, that's the challenging part of the, you know, of the league. Right. But winning. I mean, that's the only way you can do it. And the right to to feel the way they feel because we did not have a good year. And that's that comes with uh, being a fan. You just, you know, um, opinion is shaped by the record. I, you know, you have a hard time explaining. Well, this really works when you lost ten in a row. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to explain it. And so there's no. But you can also be shaped um, by what the average fan thinks. You have to have a program. You go with it. You stick with it. You, you put hard work into it. The only thing is you have to convince the players that's the way to go. And that's when everybody and the organization. When you have that, then eventually the fans will follow because you should win. And if you do the right thing, then they will be there. Right. And, you know, and I think every year, think about it, every year there, there are going to be criticisms. A player may not get enough time they wanted, not enough touches, which I hate that word, but um, not being uh, content for a certain role. Uh, that's, that's always a little bit of a chatter. And I think in media centers like L.A., New York, more of a chatter is a little bit, of, you know, it's loud. Um, but those are things you deal with as you go on, and I think that's part of the business. Uh, so, you you try to uh, you try to make sure that everybody gets on the same page, and you tweak what you can't get everything there, and you adjust to your talent. You have to adjust to it, and I and the problem here has been we've never had an, the the team long enough to get traction and to show that yeah okay this is it, or to even even to show me that it doesn't work. You know, because you, you're, you're kind of shooting in the dark a little bit because of injuries and because not the same people are here. Um, so those are challenges that uh, going forward you have to meet. Well, that definitely has to be improved, there's no doubt. And um, that comes from... Um, Guys playing with each other for a longer time. That's come bringing Kobe back. Obviously, is going to help him immensely. Uh, getting a sense of swagger that you're winning and playing well leads to better defense. Your energy levels, um, and then you know playing the guys that are defensive minded also. So it's a little bit of a combination of a lot of things. But that's where it has to improve. Um, so other than that, is just making sure that you get people in the right spots, let them stay there, let them settle in, have a bond, 
And defense comes from the energy that and the awareness that you have and being able to play guys that, that will buy into that. Well, you know, that's, that's a nice word too, holding people accountable. You can a little bit, but when you only have eight guys, they kind of know they're going to play. You know, it's kind of like, well, really, I'm not playing today. So you can preach and talk and stomp and, and all that, but uh, uh, holding people accountable is whether they play or not. Uh, now, there's double standard, you know. You got to hold people that are accountable that that need to be on the floor, especially uh, you know stars and different different ones. So there's different ways you have to hold people accountable. But the biggest thing is having them buy into the system. This is how we're playing, uh, pulling in the same direction, and then uh, and everybody uh, trying to get better at what you're doing.